Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Michael. Welcome back to IDB. In this video, we're showing you 21 features in iOS 16 that you must be using as soon as you install it on your device. So on this channel, we did upload another video on iOS 16. It was over half an hour long, covering over 100 features on iOS 16. But if you don't feel like sitting down and watching an entire 30 minute YouTube video, then this video is for you as we're gonna cover all of the best features on iOS 16 that you should start using immediately after you install it on your device. So let's go ahead right now and jump in. So number one is inside settings. You wanna click on sounds and haptics and then scroll down to keyboard feedback. Now this is new in iOS 16. It's called haptic feedback on the keyboard. So if you don't have this enabled right now, I want you to go and turn it on right now and start typing and leave a comment down below and tell me just how much better it feels typing on your iPhone with haptic feedback. I don't know why it took Apple so long to implement this feature on the keyboard, but nevertheless it is here now and typing with haptic feedback feels so good on iOS 16. Number two is inside of messages. You know how when you accidentally delete a conversation that you didn't wanna delete and you can't get it back? Well, now you're actually able to get those messages back on iOS 16. All you have to do is click on the edit button on the top left and you can show your recently deleted messages. So number three and number four are inside a message thread. And in iOS 16, you're now able to undo a sent iMessage and you can also edit an iMessage as well. So if I send a text here, you can see I have the option now when I press and hold to either undo send or edit the message. So I'll first show you what undo send looks like. If I click on it, you can see it kind of poof disappears like that. And then you can also edit the message as well. If I press and hold on it, I can click on edit and I can backspace and I can make any changes I want to. Just keep in mind though, that the person you're sending this message to is going to be able to see the history of edits made to the message. And also if you're texting someone who hasn't updated their phone yet, if they're still on iOS 15, for example, they are still gonna see that original message. Next up at number five allows you to remove a photo from its background. This one is really cool and I don't know how it works so well, but it's one of those typical Apple features that just works. So if you have a photo and there's a defined subject in the photo, so take for example, this photo I have of a backpack. If I wanna remove the subject, in this case, my backpack, all I have to do is press and hold on the photo. And as you can see, it gets selected just like that. You can choose to copy or share it right from here. And you can also choose to drag the image anywhere you want in iOS. So I'm gonna pick up my backpack right here. And let's say we wanna send it away in an iMessage. I can drag it into a message thread just like that and I can send it away. So coming in next at number six, we're gonna stay inside of photos. And this one allows you to make edits to an entire group of photos. So let me show you how this works. If you click on the select button at the top right, select any bunch of photos that you want. And then after you press and hold on one of the selected photos, you can see it's gonna batch them all together and you have a whole bunch of useful options inside this menu. My two favorites include adjust date and time and also adjust location. This can be very useful, especially for me. I'll give you a quick example. Sometimes I import photos and videos from my external camera into my iCloud photos. And sometimes when I do that, the metadata, including the date and time and also the location sometimes can get messed up. And it's really easy now in iOS 16 to select all of my imported photos and change the date and time with one click. So coming in next at number seven, we are staying inside the Photos app once again. If you click on albums and scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see new here in iOS 16 is a new section called duplicates. So this is really useful. A lot of people I know have a ton of duplicate photos in their iCloud photo library, and that's kind of useless, right? It's just taking up iCloud space that you don't need to use. So I would highly recommend you check out this duplicate section inside of the Photos app, and it allows you to quickly merge all of your duplicate photos. So coming in next at number eight, this one could possibly be the most thoughtful feature in iOS 16. So inside the health app, there is now medication tracking. So you wanna click right here where it says medications, it's a blue icon, and you're able to add any medication you want into the health app, and you're able to set up a schedule and also get reminders for when it's time to take your medication. This is going to be very useful for a ton of people around the world. So coming in next at number nine is the all new dictation experience in iOS 16. 
And if you didn't use Dictation before on your iPhone, I would highly recommend checking it out now just because it works so much better. So Dictation now supports automatic punctuation. So it's gonna input periods and commas for you. You're also able to go right to the keyboard and make any edits while Dictation is still running. And you're also able to put in emojis right with your voice, smiling emoji. So coming in next at number 10, this one may possibly be one of my favorites in iOS 16. These are all of the updates to live text in the camera. So live text now supports various conversions and also translations from different languages. So I'm holding up some Spanish writing here and you're able to see there's now a live text icon in the bottom right of my viewfinder. If I click on that, it's gonna bring the text forward and you can see there's a translate button on the bottom left. If I tap on that, you can see it's gonna convert it to English right on top of it. Number 11 is for the widgets on your lock screen, but more importantly, there's actually a hidden widget that not many people know about. So if you click on the date, which is right above the time right here, not many people using iOS 16 know that you can actually put a widget here that isn't the date. So you can see we have suggestions from the system and we also have third party applications that can go here as well. So I have Carrot Weather. I also have some other apps such as my flight tracker and some motivational quotes. So you can have whatever you want above the time here. It doesn't have to be the date. So next up is the all new lock screen experience for when you're playing music. So you're probably familiar with this now playing platter, which lives at the bottom of your lock screen. Apple has updated this in iOS 16. And if this is the only change they made, this would be a pretty good update for me. But it also goes one step further and you're able to now click on the album art and you can fill your entire lock screen with your music. You can see it also gets rid of your wallpaper and it kind of makes it a blurred out version of the album art. So this is a much better way to get more immersed in your music. So next up at number 13 and 14, these are both inside of mail. The first one allows you to undo a sent email just like we could in iMessage, but we also have some other options with this inside of mail. So I'm gonna go ahead and reply to this junk email just to show you an example. So if I click on send, you can see now in my inbox, there's an undo send button. If I click this, it's gonna bring the draft back up as it never ended up sending the email in the first place. By default in iOS 16, that undo send button is gonna be there for 10 seconds, but you're actually able to change that. So inside of mail settings, if you scroll all the way down, you can change the undo send delay all the way up to 30 seconds. And the other great feature inside of mail lets you schedule an email to be sent at a certain time. So instead of just clicking on the send button, you can now press and hold on the send button and you can choose different options for when you want that message to get sent. So next up at number 15 is inside of Apple Maps and you can finally have multiple stops along your route. So this is a very basic feature and tons of other mapping applications have had this feature for a very long time. But if you wanna be in the Apple ecosystem and use Apple Maps, this is a really convenient feature to have along your route. You're also able to reorganize your stops just by dragging them like this. And I believe you can have up to 12 or 15 stops along your route. Coming in next at number 16, we're inside of notes. And I think a lot of people are going to love this feature. So if you click on the icon on the bottom left, you now have the option to create a smart folder. So what is a smart folder? Well, it's pretty much a folder that is gonna do all of the sorting for you. So a traditional folder inside of the notes app, you would have to add each note into that folder manually, but a smart folder inside of iOS 16 allows you to have notes inside that folder without you doing anything. The system is going to do it for you. So you can have notes into that smart folder based on any of these criteria right here. So I'll choose by date created and let's say last seven days. So as soon as I create this smart folder, any note that I have created in the last seven days is going to be put into this folder. So if I click on done, you can see I now have a new smart folder appear right there. So the next two features are inside of the reminders app. The first one is pretty basic, but it is useful. So you have your own lists at the bottom of reminders. If you wanna keep one of these at the top of the application, you can now do that. So just like you can pin certain messages inside of iMessage, you're now able to pin certain lists inside of the app right here. If you wanna remove the pin, all you have to do is press and hold and click on unpin. 
And also another really cool feature inside of Reminders on iOS 16 is the option to save a Reminders list as a reusable template. So let me show you how this works. So I have my shopping list right here. Now, if I wanna create a template out of this, all I have to do is click on the menu icon and then click on save as template. I'll click on save. You can see it goes to the top of the screen right there. Now, if I wanna create a new list, but I don't wanna create this list from scratch, I wanna have the stuff that was in that template, all I have to do is click on add list. We have a new template section right here and I can choose my shopping list as a starting point for the new list. So next up at number 19, we are inside of Wi-Fi settings right here. And if you click on the little information icon to any Wi-Fi network you're connected to, you now have the option to view what the Wi-Fi password is for that network. So before in iOS 15, you would only have the option to share the Wi-Fi password, but now if you click on where it says password, it's gonna scan with Face ID to make sure it's you, and then it'll actually show you what the Wi-Fi password is. So this can come in handy if you don't know what your Wi-Fi password is, but you have to enter it on something new like a printer, for example. So coming in at our second to last feature at number 20 is the option to now rename a screenshot in iOS 16. So if I go and take one and click on it, when I click on the share button at the top right, we now have a new option to rename the screenshot right here. And finally coming in at number 21 is inside of the translate app. And we now have a camera view that lets you translate a whole bunch of text just by taking a picture of the page. So you can do this inside of the camera app as I showed you previously in this video, but the Translate app now supports this as well. And I find if you have to convert an entire page, for example, into a different language, the Translate app works a lot better than using live text in the camera. So there we have it. I would say if you are using these 21 features on your device, then you are definitely getting the most you can out of iOS 16. If you guys enjoyed this video, I want you to head down into the comments and tell me what your favorite feature was that I covered. Also drop a like on this video as it really does help us out. My name is Michael with IDB. I'll see you next time.